Yahweh, Yahweh Shai said, I didn't show on it, and Dor Harness is a good soldier. So that's that's it, man. Them guys that was out there, all these different wars that the white man had, Vietnam, World War II, Iraq, whatever, them guys, them soldiers over there, they don't know when they're going to be called back in. They got to wait for orders. But while they out there, they got to get in that zone. That's why you brothers got to start watching movies like Platoon and shit like that. You had guys <laughs> in the movie Platoon with Charlie Sheen and all that. In the beginning, we always bring this movie up. You had the big fat white boy, Peggy Sue. She's a girl for me, Taylor. See? His mind was back on his woman when he was in the war zone, man. He had a picture of Peggy Sue. And then when they went out on deployment that very night, he got fragged. He was the first guy to go. And then the, my man Tom Berenger Barnes cursed him out. He said, you don't sleep on no fucking ambush. He said, the next son of a bitch I catch copping Z's, and he was just hardcore. He just said, fuck that guy, he's dead. See that sack of shit land on the ground? And then another war movie, Dead Presidents, with my man uh, Lorenz Tate, I think, and uh, Smokey, <laughs> Smokey uh, uh, Chris Tucker, they was in the Nam. Before he left, he knocked this woman up, and I guess, you know, he got word. He got, maybe she wrote a letter, I'm pregnant, I'm having your baby. See? And what happened? Chris Tucker, I guess he had, they met up in Nam, his buddy, and was like, yo, man. He said, yeah, man, Juanita, I got her pregnant, man. I got a daughter back home. Yo, nigga, let me, they were drinking the beers, they was on R&R, &R, whatever. Yo, nigga, let me see the pictures, nigga. He said, look, man. Yo, man, and that dude, he said that shit like he meant it. He said, look at me, motherfucker. Look, he told Chris Tucker, that's back in the world. I don't give a f He said, I'm in this motherfucker. I'm in this jungle right now. And he kind of had a cold look like he really meant it. I don't give a fuck about nothing in the world, man. Until I, when I get back in the world, when I get back home, that's when I deal with all that. Right here, all I care about is what's going on right here and right now. That's what's keeping me alive, nigga. He told him that. I don't give a fuck. Basically, he said, I don't give a fuck about my daughter right now. I don't give a fuck about my woman right now, man. Until I get back to them. When, it's, when that time comes, then I deal with that. But right now, you're in a war zone. We are in a war zone. Shalom Israel, I'd like to give all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bashem, Yahweh Shai, double honors to the apostles and the elders of the Great Millstone, and Shalom to Lek out there, doing this work of faith and labor of love and truth sincerity. I just want to get into a brief topic no woman and children at war, alright? So, with that, this is uh, the book of Joshua, chapter 1, verse 9. Have not I commanded thee, be strong and of good courage, be not afraid, neither be thou dismayed. For the Lord thy power is with thee, whithersoever thou goest. And you know, that's one key thing why we got to remember while we uh, you know, battling and in this war, you know, this great fight of good and evil every single day. That as long as we stay in the spirit, man, we have Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah with us. You know, and, and whatever we endeavor in within this truth, whichever we do, put our hand uh, uh, forth in righteousness. You know, that that's key. Knowing that you have that righteous power behind you and not forgetting that for one moment. You know, in them loneliest hours, you know, in which you may uh, feel demons coming upon you, so on and so forth. You know, you always got to remind yourself, I know the Lord got me. You know what I'm saying? It got to be like that little, uh, you know, like how you see like them little uh, cartoon movies or whatever. Like they may have the, the devil on one side and you got, you know, uh, the, the angel on another side. You know, it's really, that's how it is, you know, because Satan is always trying to, you know, get in our heads and make us think, you know, certain things. But keeping, you know, in your mind 
the Lord is on my side at all times. You know, whatever I, I set forth my hand to do, you know. It says, verse 10, Then Joshua commanded the officers of the people, saying, Pass through the hosts and command the people, saying, Prepare you victuals, for within three days ye shall pass over this Jordan to go in to possess the land which the Lord thy power, your power, giveth you to possess it. And to the Reubenites, and to the Gadites, and to the half tribe of Manasseh spoke Joshua, saying, Remember the word which Moses, the servant of the Lord, commanded you, saying, The Lord your power have given you rest and have given you this land. Because, you know, uh, you know, uh, under the hand of Moses, you know, when we had to go up against, um, you know, uh, the, those Amorite kings, uh, Sihon and Og of Bashan, you know, pretty much when we slaughtered them off, you know, the, the Lord gave that land of, you know, those Amorite kings unto Reuben, Gad, and the half tribe of Manasseh, which is on the east side, you know, of the Jordan River, you know. So it says, verse 4, i read that again, verse 13. Remember the word which Moses, the servant of the Lord, commanded you, saying, The Lord your power have given you rest and have given you this land. Your wives, your little ones, and your cattle shall remain in the land which Moses gave you on this side, Jordan. But ye shall pass before your brethren armed and all the mighty men of valor and help them until the Lord have given your brethren rest as he have given you. And they also have possessed the land which the Lord your power giveth them. Then ye shall return unto the land of your possession and enjoy it, which Moses the, the Lord's servant gave you on this side, Jordan, towards the sun rising. Okay, so, you know, uh, Joshua told them that pretty much what, you got to go forth to war, you know. Because they had their inheritance already on, on the east side of the Jordan River. But Joshua told them, he's like, all your wives, your cattle, all your possessions is going to remain here in the land. But you yourselves, you're going to go forth the war in, in front of your brothers, man. You know what I'm saying? Until the Lord, that power, have given them rest as well as they have given you that rest, man. He said, and after you go to war, then you come back, then you shall enjoy your land, your wives, your cattle, your children, so on and so forth, man. You know? So... There's no women and children at war, you know. We have to keep all that behind us, man. You no know, brothers that have families and stuff. I mean, we say this all the time. You know, brothers love their families and things of that nature. But what? They can't be on your mind, you know what I'm saying, as like you a regular old family man. As you are, uh, you know, living in the, in the TV show, it's supposed to be like family matters. You know what I'm saying? This ain't that type of thing, man, you know. Because... We have to have that faith that at the end of the day, the Lord will have our families, whether he deliver our families or not. You have to be worried about yourself because we in a war. We, in a, we battling every single day, man. You know, we fight and we lose certain battles against Satan day in and day out. But overall, what? We're trying to win the war, man. We're trying to enter that heavenly rest. So we can't have our, our woman and our children on our mind constantly because that, I guess, entangled with the, with the affairs of this life. You know what I'm saying? And, and possibly can choke us up and get us cast up out of the way of understanding. Or take our focus away from the word of the Lord. And therefore, as soldiers of Yahweh Bashim Yahushua, we are in a, we are not able to perform to the best of our ability, man. You know? When you at when you at war, any wrong move can cost you, man. That's why your mind, the scriptures speak about what your mind have to be single. Your mind have to be focused, man. You know, on a task at hand. And that's doing what? The work of Yahweh Bashim Yahushah. Okay? But if your mind is not single, your mind is on, you know, uh, your family life and all of that. That's going to cost you in, in, in big ways, man. In big ways which none of us want to face. You know? The scriptures also say too, you know, um, that what? Our families shall give us up, you know, uh, within those times. So... Knowing that, you got to have it in your mind that your family is your enemy. Yeah, you love them, but you got to have it in your mind that your family is your enemy. When you watch certain certain movies, you know, and certain uh, more up-to-date movies now, what, you know, like certain, like, uh, you could say, consider what, gangster movies or whatever the case may be, or just certain movies in general, you know, a person that has a family, your enemy will usually use your family against you, you know what I'm saying, to try to weaken you. And within these final hours, 
you know, that's one of Esau's devices in which he's going to use against us is our family, man. You know, might have to see, you know, have your family before you, your wife and your kids. And Esau saying, if you don't, you know what I'm saying, take this chip, you know what I'm saying, I'm going to behead your son, man. But these are the things that in which we face within this truth and we have to be prepared. We have to uh, gird up the Lord's of our mind. You know how it says in um, um, Job, you know what I'm saying? So at the times where you might be in the family, you might be in the house with your family or whatever, you got to start preparing your mind for these things, man. This is serious, you know? This truth is no laughing matter, man, at all, especially these times in which we in. So times in which you might be spending time with your, your family and stuff like that, you got to just look at your kids, man, knowing in your mind that you love your little son or your little daughter or whatever, you know, and just looking at them. Am I willing to forsake you in that day, you know what I'm saying, so that I can inherit an everlasting life and Lord willing the Lord bring you back unto me within the kingdom? You have to have that within your mind and prepare yourself for these things. When them times come, we don't truly know what we're going to do. The Lord's Spirit has to be upon us. But this is a, something that I personally do, you know what I'm saying, that, you know, helps me, you know what I'm saying, to prepare my mind, you know, for the battle with that great day. You know, and um, this uh, next scripture I want to get is uh, and um, it's like you, this uh, the book of Luke, chapter twelve. You know, basic scripture we all know. Uh, Luke chapter twelve, verse thirty-four. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. Let your loins be girded about. And your light's burning, man. Okay? So where your treasure is, your heart will be also. If your treasure is your family, you're going to spend more time on your family. You know what I'm saying? But if your treasure is what your how about Shemir Awashah, okay, then what? You will possibly have everlasting life as part of that elect, man. You know? And it said what? Let your loins be girded about and your light's burning. When it says what? Let your loins be girded, man, man get, your, get yourself together. Be in the right mind frame, man. Shake yourself out of the dust and the imaginations of having a good life in here in Babylon, man. You know? Okay, the, the scriptures say, you know, Yahweh told the disciples, uh, if you forsake, you know, wives, children, a family, brethren, and lands for my sake, you shall receive a hundredfold in the kingdom, man. You know? And at times, what? Yahweh told uh, the man that wanted to bury his father, said, uh, let the dead bury the dead and follow me. You know, so it's not to that extent in which we have to forsake our families now, but we have to forsake our families in what fashion? We have to forsake those family vacation trips, you know, fucking uh, going uh, two weeks, you know what I'm saying, go spend time at Disney World, you know, little frivolous stuff like that, man. We forsaking those uh, uh, moments, taking the family portraits and all that, we forsaking all of that, man. Forget how about Shemir Al Shah, because we know that there's a greater reward in the end, man. Okay, and we'll be much more blessed in the kingdom, Lord willing, than we ever could be now, man. Because when you look at it, the things in which we're going through now, how this, this matter of fact, the scripture said, you know, uh, pretty much in uh, Corinthians, the fourth chapter, you know, for this light affliction cannot compare basically into the things in which we're inheriting the kingdom, you know. So in this lifetime, we have to learn how to make affliction our friend, you know, sufferance has to become your friend. You know, you have to embody that and make it a part of you, man. Sufferings, afflictions, uh, and infirmities, those are our friends, man. You know, to, to keep us in the right mind frame that we have to suffer in the same like mind as Yahweh shall suffer. Okay? For us not to get comfortable and complacent within this world, you know, to know that we got to be on our A game and in this war as soldiers for the Lord at all times and not letting, not letting, not one hint. Not one thing in this world will hinder our progress towards pressing towards that marking your how about Shimmy how shot. Okay? So, this next uh, precept, real quick. This is uh, the book of uh, Luke. Still in the book of Luke, chapter 8. And I started out uh, verse 13. They on the rock are they which, when they hear, receive the word with joy. And these have no root. Which for a while believe and in time of temptation fall away and that temptation in my bible is highlighted it says uh testing man so in a time of testing they fall away so when we at war what you're going to see bodies dropping man and what's that compared to when it's truth god's falling out 
You know, God's getting cast out, whatever the case may be. You got to become numb to those things, man. We've all seen many examples of God's falling out and different things of that nature. So when something happens to the man next to you, you know, you get, that's a casualty at war, man. You got to know how to keep on moving forward and not let that affect you. You know, you, you seeing your first body, uh, seeing the first body drop, that's going to shake you up like, damn, you know what I mean? It's going to send shock waves into you because it's a sign unto you that you could fall out at any given time. But you want to examine yourself so Lord willing those things don't happen. But everything is of the Father, you know? So when you start seeing bodies dropping, it becomes a part of you for you to examine yourself, for you to keep pressing harder and harder, man, you know? So, uh, verse 14, it says, and, and that which fell among thorns are they which when they have heard go forth and are choked with cares and riches and pleasures of this life and bring no fruit to perfection. Okay? So they which fell among the thorns are they which choked, which got choked for the cares and the riches of this world, man. You know? So at battle, you know, you could have... You could have got disarmed for whatever reason. A bomb could have went off uh, uh, next to you and you got your, your, your weapon flew. Now you got to sit here and tussle, you know what I'm saying, with somebody of another nation in this war. And now he's choking you out. You know what I'm saying? Why? Why is this happening? Because you worried about your family back home while you in the midst of war, man. You know? You got, you got caught off guard to where you didn't recognize what was going on in your surroundings. You wasn't being circumspect. So you got caught off. Now you got choked out. And now you up out of this thing, man. You know? So we got to be careful for all of the ways of Satan that are trying to, to, uh, to try us to get out of this way of understanding, man. You know? This, this truth is serious, man. And, you know, like the apostles always be saying, you know, that the battle... The main battle with this truth, it begins here, man. Everything is within your mind, man. From the moment you wake up to the time you go to sleep, you're battling, man. Different thoughts, different demons in your head every single day. You know what I'm saying? But you got to have what? Your, your, your mind girded properly to be able to cast all those demons off, man. In the name of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh first and foremost, you know, by prayer and, and recognizing yourself, knowing yourself, man. You know? You, you got to have uh, a, a virtues about yourself, man. You know, these things are important, you know, for our endurance within this truth, man. Because if you can't recognize the demons and stuff that's trying to attack you while you're at war, then, then you're bound to lose, man. You know, and, and none of us want that in the end, man. You know, we all want to come out on top. But it says, uh, verse 15, But that on the good ground are they which in an honest and good heart, having heard the word, keep it. And bring forth fruit with patience, man. Okay? So, you know what? We, here in the word, what? We want to keep it, man. Near and dear unto our hearts and, and never let your how about Shemi shot go, man. You know, that way we endure unto the end, man. This is what we all hoping for, you know? So what? We trying to be on that good ground, be deeply rooted within this truth so that nobody can uh, uh, take our faith away from us, man, you know? That's what it gets into about letting no man take thy crown from you. You know, meaning let no man snatch your faith from you, man. Not letting the cares of this world take away the faith that you have in your how about Shemiah your shot. Not letting Esau and coming up against you in a in a hours of temptation, the, the mark of the beast, the RFD chip strip your faith away from you, man. Not letting you strip your faith away from yourself by not paying attention to yourself and paying uh giving heed unto the things that's going on within your mind, man. You have to be able to sift. We you know, we constantly in different seasons and we're going through different sifting processes. But you got to be able to sift your own thoughts within your own head to, to know what's right from what's wrong. And that's all you have to be through the Spirit. We have to live in the Spirit, man. You know? So, you know, with that, you know, it's no women and children at, at, at war, man. You know what I'm saying? We got to cast off you know, the, the, the burdens of man, you know what I'm saying, and, and leave everything up to your how about Shemi shot. You know, whatever's going to happen with our family is going to be. But just knowing your mind that you pressing towards that mark and you're not going to let nothing stop you when you're on this mission. And the beautiful thing about the mission, you know, because the scriptures say, uh, Revelations 14 to 13, you know, blessed are, are they which die in the Lord from henceforth. You know, so in the typical war, if you die before you 
you'll you'll try to get to a certain to complete a certain mission, but you might die. That's what mission felt. But the great thing about this truth is, if we stand stiffly for the name of Yahweh Bashmi Al Shah, we wind up dying in the end. Our mission is complete because that's going to be some buzz lots to die in this truth, man. So just know that regardless of what you endure to the end, and if you die for the Lord, the mission is complete, man. You will inherit everlasting life, man. So with that, you know, I hope this quick segment was edifying. No women and children at war. With that, I'd like to give all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bashem, Yahweh Shai, double honors to the apostles and elders of great millstone, and Shalom to the elect out there, doing his work of faith and labor of love, truth, sincerity. Shalom, death to America.